All right, so for the concept of enzyme nomenclature and classification, it's very, very simple. It's one of the simplest questions you can ever come across in biochemistry. So let me show you guys how I used to handle this question. So for me, bar, let's come to this place. There's a mnemonics I used to watch. Remember this um, enzymes. The mnemonics is what? Ot leo. Ot leo. H. Okay? That's why if you should pay for me, let me get money and buy laptop, touch screen, card. I will do you to tire. Ot leo. This one I'm not trying to do with my keyboard. So O is what? Oxidoreductase. T is what? Transferase. H is what? Hydrolase. L is what? Lyase. That's the first L. I is what? Isomerase. The last L is what? Ligase. So if you just arrange them like that, right? it's quite simple. You just know that the EC number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is everything that we're going to talk about in this answer okay so let's quickly have it okay they said that you should talk about the enzyme nomenclature and classification so remember when we were talking about ortho the first one was our ec1 okay but let's have the overview before we talk about the answer we said that enzymes are actually what biological catalysts that accelerate chemical reactions in living organisms okay without enzymes reactions would take let me say if you eat bread now it will take like two months for that bread to digest, which is not good for business, right? So enzymes are classified, and this is based on the type of reactions they can work on. That's catalyzed, and the type of substrates they act on, okay? So the International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, that's IUBMB, is the, is the group of people, okay, composed of biochemistry specialists that actually did this classification, okay? So they provided what a systemic nomenclature and classification scheme for enzymes. Okay, so enzyme classifications is into what six major classes, just like we said. So let's write the mnemonic again: Ot Leo, Ot Leo, like this. Okay, the first O is what oxidoreductase, and this is what EC, EC one, EC one. What is EC? EC means enzyme classification. So EC1 is enzyme classification 1, okay? So what is the function of oxidoreductase? From the word oxidoreductase, you can now spot out oxidation reaction, reduction reaction, okay? So these ones, they are enzymes that catalyze oxidation reduction reactions. Example is what? Lactate dehydrogenase, which catalyzes the interconversion of what? Lactate and pyruvate, okay? Then... Ot, the next T is what transferase. From the word transferase, you can start to what transfer. Okay. So these ones they function to transfer functional group from one molecule to another. Okay. So example is what alanine amino transferase. Notice those, those trans am, am, amination reactions in biochemistry. Now, this alanine amino transferase transfers an amino group. From alanine to alpha ketoglutarate. I've already made videos on transamination reactions, and everybody watching this video should know transamination reactions. Let's move to the next one. Ot. So it's H. Okay. H is what? Hydrolase. Enzyme classification three. Simple. Ot leo. I'll keep writing this mnemonic because with this mnemonic, you have already understood this question. Okay. So we are on the third one now. So hydrolase. Hydration has to do with water. Okay, so this one they catalyze hydrolysis reactions. Okay, so they are trying to like break down the bonds by adding water. You know, water is a universal solvent. Okay, so you add water, some things become soluble. Solid becomes soluble. So example is what amylase, which catalyzes the hydrolysis of starch into sugar. We are on the fourth one now, which is what lysis. Lysis function to catalyze the addition and removal of what? Lysis, you know, lysis, like lyse something, break down something. Okay, so they catalyze with the addition or removal of groups to form double bonds without hydrolysis or oxidation. 
Example of a lyse is what aldolase, which catalyzes the cleavage of what fructose 6-biphosphate to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroacetone phosphate. You guys know where this thing is coming from? From glycolysis pathway. So you must actually know your chemistry 360. Okay? If you know your chemistry 360, you don't have to read everything. Because if you knew glycolysis part, you just bring the example there. Okay? So you see, this is just like a summary. I've told you guys in the morning, alt leo, start numbering it from O to the end. Okay? Then what is the next one, which is enzyme classification 5, is isomerase. This one, the catalyzed is iso isomer is rearranged. You want to rearrange something. The same thing, but you are rearranging it in a different way. Okay? So cat they catalyze the, the rearrangement of atoms within a molecule. Example is what phosphoglucose isomerase, which catalyze the conversion of what? Glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate. Then we have ligase. Ligase is what? The sixth one. That's the... Okay, that should be the like, last one. So the uh, ligase, their, their function is what? Catalyze the joining of two molecules with the concomitant hydrolysis of a diphosphate bond in ATP or a similar compound, okay? Example is the DNA ligase, which catalyzes the joining of what DNA strands. So the other one is breakdown, the other one, this one is joining, okay? It catalyzes the joining of DNA strands by what? Forming phosphodiester bonds, okay? So this one is a summary. If you pause here, you can be able to now what? Know everything that we spoke about, okay? So just number it, one, two, three, four, five six and this is the nature of the reaction they catalyze all right so enzyme nomenclature enzymes are what that one is basically classification right so let's talk about the nomenclature enzymes are named according to a standardized system that includes what the systemic name and the common name so the systemic name is basically what you bring the name of the substrate they can act on Oxido is the substrate. Ace is what you brought. Okay? So, name of substrates plus type of reaction plus ace. Do you understand? For example, hexokinase is systemic, systematically named what? D-hexo-6 phosphotransferase. So, enzymes have two names. They are common name and they are systemic name. Systemic name, you are talking about the substrate they act on. D-hexose is a substrate that hexokinase will act on. The type of reaction, yeah, do you understand? Then ACE, the type of reaction is transfer reaction, okay? ACE is to know that what something is an enzyme. Maltose is acted upon by maltase. Lactose is acted upon by what? Lactase, you understand? So for enzyme, you must actually put the ACE there, okay? So talking about the common name now, so common name, of, common name of enzyme is just based on the substrate and type of reaction. So it's often simpler and widely used, okay? Hexokinase is the common name for the enzyme that phosphorylates hexose. Simple, All right? So talking about the EC number now, EC number is another way of what naming enzyme. So the EC number is what we have been talking about all this while, okay? So how do you use the EC number? The format is actually what? Four part number. Okay. This represents the enzyme class, the subclass, and the specific enzyme. Okay. So, for example, let's talk about hexokinase. Hexokinase has a EC number 2711. 2.72.1, 2.7.1.1. Okay. Why? Because the EC2 stands for what? Transferase, okay. EC2.7 transfer what is actually transfers phosphorus containing groups, okay. EC2.11, okay. So now that's the enzyme class, the subclass, then the sub subclass. So it means that phosphotransferase with an alcohol group as an acceptor, that's the sub subclass, okay. Then for specific enzyme, the specific enzyme is what hexokinase you get so i think that's it for what enzyme nomenclature and classification of enzymes okay so that's it guys